In a closed system, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed through work. And we're going to talk about what work is and how we calculate work in a bit, right? But for now, we're going to start with this. Can we just right. not do work? No, we must do work. Work is a form of energy, and so that will be what we're accounting for. Huh. Because you have to give away energy. Is there any way I can just not give away any energy? No. As a human, that's impossible. Right. Well, if your dad could give Charlotte. <laughs> I just wonder if, like, dead people are still, like, giving up. Charlotte! I mean, arguably, yes. If they are recently deceased, they are still giving off energy because they are emitting heat. Charlotte, your life is very important. It's it's not a, I don't want to die. I mean, <laughs> dead people? Right. Charlotte, don't. You're being evil. Well be I mean, you asked. Okay, so the idea, right, is that in a closed system, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed through work, which means that when we define a system, right, and that system will be things like a ball thrown in the air or a kid sliding down a slide or a Mexican jumping bean jumping from your hand into the air, well, et, cetera, yeah. et cetera, right? You'll see when I give you some example problems to go over. But ideally, the, the whole point is that if we account for the total energy in that system as we have defined it, then that value cannot change, right? And so the process is actually a conservative calculation, right? A conservative calculation. And the conservative calculation looks like this. E equals MC squared. E. Oh. Because the energy cannot be destroyed, it must be the Wait, same. What's all of that? So the prime, the S or the apostrophe at the end, indicates after, right? And so E is the total energy of a system before an action. And E prime, right, using math terminology for the asterisk afterward or the apostrophe afterwards, is the total energy of a system after an action. Is this on our midterm? No. Oh, praise. Oh, people in Mrs. Hodges' class, is the 7.1 through 7.3 on our midterm? Definitely. Yeah. Probably because we were tested on it. Obviously, it's Mrs. Hodges. What? She's Read my name. bestie. All right. Guys, this is being recorded. So generally what that means <laughs> no, it is. is yeah. that after the total amount of energy before versus the total amount of, amount of energy afterwards is a conservative value, right? And so all that we're going to be looking at is that it's going to change forms, right? It's going to change forms, transforming, right? Obviously, Wait, that's what that if, word means. Yes? If they are equal, then why do they have different um, definitions? So that might be a super question. Well, it's not so much that they have different definitions, it's that we're looking at them before or after an action. For example, dropping something or throwing something or one action that we're going to see a lot in terms of elasticity is letting go. This has a set amount of energy yeah. and then this has a set amount of energy and those two sets are right, the same, okay. but the action that happens changes it from one form of energy to another form of energy. Right. And so that's really what these problems are, and that's really what the process is all about, is just identifying the forms. But the basic rule, the law, is just E equals E prime. Right? And so from there, it's a matter of just saying that what we want to do, the basic process that we want to do, is start with the law, E equals E prime. Right? And then what you're going to do in terms of stages is you're going to identify all the types Yes. For our purposes, we're going to be working at first with four different types. We're going to go over those in just a minute, right? So I want the general process of what we're doing first, okay. and then I'll show you the specific details. Yes? Types of what? Types of energy. Energy. Okay. Right? The various <laughs> forms of energy that it can transition through, right? Yesterday I showed you in the in the with the spring, we're talking about things like motion, spring elastic energy, gravitational energy, and the other one will be work. And other examples include chemical energy, nuclear energy, solar power, etc. And for each, you mean the before and the after? Exactly. Okay. Yes. What is energy measured in 
Yes, we're going to get to that. Excellent. Yeah, well, Excellent question. I'll, I'm going to list that here in just a minute. <laughs> well, the answer is Jules. J-O-U-L-E-S as in a, a person, scientist name. Oh, right? That Last name. Sophia, <laughs> stop thinking. You're Not Jewel, the uh, yodeler. What's a yodeler? <laughs> For people that have not been here. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Hello, people that have not been here. I miss you. <clears throat> what? So you're going to identify all the types, right, for each, right? And then what you're going to do is uh, list them all, right? Right? And then what we're going to do is substitute in formula, right, the way to calculate the amount of energy for the various forms, which is what we'll go over in a moment, and then solve for what's missing. That's the basic outline of what we're going to be doing, right? Conservation works this way both in energy and in momentum later when we look at that as well. So the basic outline is very simple, right? Identify what the action is, <coughs> determine what kind of energy we have before, determine what kind of energy we have afterwards, and then the rest of it is just substitution and solving, okay? Okay, so to make sense of that, we need to talk about the types of energy that we have for various systems, okay? Right, energy can never be created or destroyed, but what can happen is that we can transfer energy into a system and we can transfer energy out of a system. So part of the way that we're gonna see a change in energy, right, is to have an interaction through work. And so that's the first thing. Work, work is the transformational form of energy. Wait. Work, 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 work. No. I can see you. <laughs> what do I mean by transformational form of energy? I mean the energy that changes the energy inside a system, right? And so oftentimes work is going to be moving energy into the closed system or taking energy out of the closed system. Wait, John, um, so work is... Energy. Is that like a, a different word than the actual word work? No, Stuart. I'm just confused on like what this is. Like. So I would say it's the same word with a new definition, right? Okay. So if like, you think about work, right? And I'd actually <laughs> I think about it more like working out, mm -hmm. right? Not work where you have to go to work and just sit and and do whatever like it is Mariano. that you're doing. I'm thinking more about working out. When you work out, you lift weights. Right? And so essentially you make them move, right? And before that, they were not moving. And so if we define the system, right, as the weights in question, they are not going to spontaneously move. And so if we think of them as having zero energy, when we work out, we move our energy into the weights. Transform. Right, we transform energy from us to energy to the weights. Moves them, right? Because remember, movement is a form of energy. Right. But they're not moving without you. And that's really important, right? They have to move because of you interacting with them. They don't move spontaneously. Newton's first law. The object is stationary, sitting on the floor, right? You come in and you perform work in order to make them move, right? And so what, what truly it is is it's the application of force. But in this topic, how is this kind of like, what are we going to use this? Like, is that going to be another variable? It's something? a form of energy, exactly, right. Okay. So I'll show you, we're going to get there. Okay. But first we need to identify all the forms of energy, right? This is the application of force. This addiction is just getting And so work oh, can actually be calculated pretty easily, right? Force times displacement. first formula for a form of energy that a we will have today. A form. a form. We're going to have many forms of energy because it's going to transform 
into all kinds of different kinds, like we this talked the about yesterday. This the first form of the form of energy. How many forms are we talking here? We're talking four today, I think. Today? Learn just four? Yes. So it's work equals four? Force, Force times, times displacement. displacement. Right? Because if you think about it, if you don't move the weights, you don't work out. Right? The weights have to cover some displacement and change their position or else you're just pushing on them and they're not going anywhere, which is not working out. All right, so transformational form of energy application through force. Work is the first form of energy, right? It's also the first form of energy or the form of energy that transfers energy into or out of a system. So if we talk about, uh, yesterday we talked about sliding the block across the table, right? That's displacement. Right. And more importantly, <laughs> the block is moving when it starts to slide, right? Because you got to transform. But as it slides across the table, what happens to it, Harley? It's as it moving. But as it slides across the table, what happens? It decelerates. It decelerates, slows down, and then stops. And so the motion, which is a form of energy we'll address next, goes away, right? And so the only way for the block to transform the energy out so that it's no longer moving is friction force applied over how far it slides is the form of energy that then heats up the block as a form of work, which then brings it to a stop. And so in order to make the block stop moving, there has to be an applied force. You can think about it in the same way if I threw a baseball to you. Right? If I throw a baseball through the air to you, it's moving. When you catch it, it hits your hand and then moves backwards and comes to a stop. Your hand pushes a force forward, which decelerates it, slows it down, brings it to a stop. So it was moving and then goes to not moving, which means that we are actually removing energy from that system. Right? But then when we put it back down, we... And so if we wanted to throw it, it's not moving. I apply but when it's in the a force. Air, it is your energy in it. Right. But where did that energy come from? You. It comes from you through the application of force over a displacement. <laughs> so the fact that you push on it transfers energy from you into the ball and makes it move. But then when it stops, it's done. Right. And so we have work going on all over the place. So work is one of the most common forms of energy. That'd be cool if you could see that. It would be cool. Campbell. Um, so, is the F, the F like applied, right? It will be a force that is performing the transfer of energy. So in some oh, cases, so like throwing the ball, the right, in some cases okay. throwing the ball it would be the force, right? But in some cases, right, if I take an object and I hold it up in the air and I drop it, I'm not interacting with it, but it's gaining kinetic energy, right? It's transforming from potential to kinetic. Well, that's because weight, F of G, is applying a force, because weight is a force, over the displacement as it falls. And so the change, the transformation from potential, gravitational potential energy, down to motion, kinetic energy, is performed by gravity in that case, by weight. And so this F depends on each situation. But in most cases, it will be fairly obvious for us to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Work is a transformational form of energy. And then we have mechanical forms of energy, right? Which we talked about yesterday. There are two basic categories, kinetic being the first, right? This kinetic is a, energy. Wait, this is a new, like, heading. This is a form of energy, okay. right? Work is a form of energy. Kinetic energy is a form of energy, right? Work will be symbolized with a capital letter W. Because it is a proper noun. Okay, because it is a variable that we'll need, right? And kinetic energy is going to be symbolized with capital K, capital E, right? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Anything moving. K E is the variable. K E is the variable. Yes, exactly. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Anything moving is therefore defined to have kinetic energy. Like a ball dropped. Like a ball dropped. Ball or one thrown. Like or me one walking. Kicked. You walking. All of those things. Yes. <laughs> right? And so each one of those things has an amount of energy because it is moving. Right? What's interesting about this is that the direction does not matter. Interesting. <laughs> 
that's important, right? Because that means that there is really no negative kinetic energy, oh. right? Even though there are negative velocities. Because if I'm going 60 miles an hour this way, I have a certain amount of energy, right? You can imagine that if we were in a car crash and I was going 60 miles an hour this way, that energy would be <laughs> devastating if I hit a tree. Well, it would also be devastating if I was going this way, right? 60 miles an hour is 60 miles an hour, Thank regardless of what direction we're going, right? And so that's important, right? But that also means that when we do the math, the formula for kinetic energy, there should be a reason why the negative signs don't matter, and it comes from this formula. We're not going to get into how this is derived. I don't think it's necessary for this course, but we have one half mv squared. This is the formula for motion, motion energy or kinetic Wait. energy. M is mass. M is mass. V is, v is mass. velocity, right? And so you notice that V is squared. So if V was positive, that would be a positive times a positive, which gives you a positive value. Mm. If V was negative, it would be a negative times a negative, which gives you a positive value. Because so kinetic energy is always a positive value. So we should write that down. Camel. So like, is that when like the ball is just like moving, it's not like getting stuck? Exactly. So this will be when an object is in the air, moving unobstructed, it has a set amount of kinetic energy, right? And does it like It can, right? If work applies a force and brings it to a stop. Right? Exactly. And so the example that we had already is rolling something across a table, right? If it's rolling horizontally across a table, it will roll indefinitely forever, right? Newton's first law. It an object in motion will continue in motion But it'll forever. slow down. Not if it's rolling. Right, right. okay. Never Not if it's rolling. If it's sliding, yes. But rolling, no. Right. And so you can imagine that as it's rolling across the table, if Anna wanted to stop it, she'd have to put her hand up and it would hit her hand. Third which, law. Which applies a force, right? It hits her hand, her hand hits it. Exactly which applies a force that would push her hand backwards some displacement, that is the work that then brings the ball to a stop. Right. Um, I have two things. Um, mm -hmm. The equation, is that, that's for motion? This is kinetic energy, the uh, energy of motion. Okay. Yes. Um, can the work energy be in it? Like the sum or the um, like thing you get, number you get, can it be negative? This one, yes because it's very possible for the force to be forward but the displacement to be backward and so we would have a positive times a negative to get a negative energy value. Displacement right? can be backward when it's vertical, right? Or like displacement can be negative when it's vertical, right? It can, yeah. But you're absolutely right. That's exactly where we're going. Because if I'm on a motorcycle and I'm moving at, you know, 10 meters per second and then I drive up a ramp, right? As I go up the ramp, I slow down and stop. And so my kinetic energy goes away, but energy cannot just go away. So it has to transform into something You're at, else. You're oh, what's it called? It's the top, then kinetic, then the bottom. What's the P word? What's the P potential, word? Potential, potential. Potential, very good. Got it, That's John exactly Marie. right. Dang. So as we go up the ramp, we stop moving, but we gain the potential to fall off, right? And that's gravitational potential energy. So work transforms the motion into the potential to fall. It's like the spring. It's exactly like the spring. But Very the, good, Harley. the ramp like give you, you wouldn't like stop and then drop. It'd be like, it's going to be my no. unit. <laughs> right? No, so you said you're thinking of a motorcycle where I'd have an engine where I could add energy and then jump off the back. Right? Oh, okay. But that's different because that would mean that I'm going to add chemical energy oh, okay. through the gasoline. Right? Uh, and in yeah, this class, we're not going to do things like that because that's chemistry. Right. right? That's too advanced. Well, it's not that it's too advanced. It's that it's not, it, like we need to like, do no additional chemi chemical energy. So we're not going to do anything with gasoline isn't in this hard course. Isn't chemistry hard? No. I think it'll make sense when I show you some examples. All right. So let's, let's talk about. So that's kinetic energy, right? But then potential energy, identified with the variable PE, for obvious reasons. I would have never gotten that. Uh huh. <laughs> is what's called stored energy. That's like the grenade. 
Right. It has energy, but it isn't using it. That's exactly right. And so what that essentially means, right, is it has Conserving. the potential to cause something to move, right? In, in almost all cases, that's the whole point of but potential energy. What's an example? Well, well I'm going to show you some Motorcycle. examples, right? So it has the potential it's conserving. to move, right? It has the potential to move. In other words, right, it's a stored amount of energy that then can be transformed into kinetic energy and in some cases work, right? And so we're going to see how that comes together. Now the difference, of course, and we talked about this yesterday, kinetic energy is is motion, right? All motion is encompassed in this, but potential energy has a bunch of different types, right? Subcategories that exist because we can have different ways to potentially move, right? And I talked about a couple yesterday. So some examples, right, are chemical energy, right, which we talked about in terms of food, gasoline, and hand grenades, right? All of those things have the potential to cause something to move. The energy in that case is stored within the material, right? Food has the potential to make you move, right? Like, you eat food in order to gain energy, right? That's exactly what happens. Is like the sun for the plants? Yes. And so another example is solar energy, right? Another example is nuclear energy. If you know a little bit about nuclear power, Wait, we're actually so going to study that in second semester. Yes. Are you saying that these things have the potential to move something without? Are you saying that something can't move without these things, or that? I'm saying that these things have energy internally that then can be transferred into motion. But they need like an act. Yes, work. They need work. I'm good. That's exactly right. What 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 are like what is solar? Energy? Solar energy is energy from the sun. Is like solar like panels. How does that make? Oh my God, I was just about to say. No, it's people don't have to move. It's yeah. We don't have time to get into how solar energy works, but nevertheless, right? These are all examples of stored energy that you may or may not have heard of, but they're also a little bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about now. So some basic ones that we're going to use, right? Gravitational potential energy, which will be symbolized P-E-G as a subscript, like that, which is the potential to fall, right? Energy that has the potential to cause it to move. In gravitational, it's very specific to potential to move downward, right, towards the center of the earth. These are ones we're going to use. I'm so going to give you formulas wait, for each one of these in just a second. Wait, wait is this right? If I no, just because I don't want to keep going this way, uh, so I just made a second column. I said for chemical, solar, and nuclear that these things have potential to make something move with work. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Wait, so yes. um, we won't use <laughs> chemical, solar, and nuclear. We are not going to use those in this in these problems. No, we're going to use more fundamentals. So gravitational is one. The other one I showed you yesterday, Harley talked about, is the spring, right? We call that elastic energy or potential energy due to elasticity, right? Uh, I don't need to write the word potential again, right? So elastic or P E E. P E E. Mm -hmm. Potential energy. Could it be PE squared? Mm, I'm thinking subscript. Oh. Right, subscript. So potential energy, and then a subcategory of that is elasticity. Right. Could that be the popper thing we had? That's exactly what that was. Yes. Perfect. The spring and the little pink popper, right, that you fold inside out. So anything rubber, anything elastic, springs, elastic bands, rubber bands, right? Mm hmm. Exactly. Right. And so those, those two are where I want to start today because we've got potential energy due to elasticity, potential energy due to gravity, kinetic energy, and work. Those are our four forms, right? Wait, gravity is like dropping something. Gravity is like dropping something. Yes, exactly. We don't have this. 
So it could be like One, anything. Two, three, four. Could elastic potential energy be anything like flexible? Anything flexible, yes. In fact, nearly almost all materials are flexible to some degree. So it can be just even the littlest. Yes, right? My, my favorite example is paper. Because we don't think of paper as being elastic. But if I bend it and then I let go, it goes back. Which proves that it's elastic. Right? Anything that can be moved that then returns to its original shape is elastic. Does it have to be forced oh, to return to its original state? Count no, it does it naturally because that and force comes from within. Like that's that why it's going. stored potential energy. Right, exactly. Right. Good. Now, the thing is, we need some formulas for those. Hey, 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 good. It's gonna be a good use. No, 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 no. We have four of them, but there's two gravity more and Right. Should I make a beat? So those two we need to identify a little bit more specifically. Wait, right. Mr. Watts, like, yes. I don't, why, like, why particularly are we doing this? Like, like, I'm sorry, Audrey, I can't hear you. Like, why, why are we, like, learning about these types of energy? Like, like, I'll what are we going to use? I'm sure, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm, I'm on set. Uh, I'm Gravitational sorry, potential well, energy, E-E-G. Is this in, never mind. This is the potential is to fall due to Is this like a sub, subtopic for potential energy? I'm just defining that more specifically, yes. Right? Be a Weight, right, remember, is the force due to gravity. Oops, sorry, not P. Weight, remember, is F of G. And so this is the potential to fall due to the force of gravity, right? Gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy, right, is the potential to fall due to weight. And so if we think of an object being in the air, right, and we look at the free body diagram, we know that it has weight, F of G, acting downward. So are we, are we a gravitational? Yes. Right, almost, yes, yes. And so then it has the potential to fall down, right, however high up it was, H, height. Wouldn't this just be dy? It would be dy. Dy of okay. m. Right, so you can call it dy. We like to think of it as height because I'll show you why in just a second. Potential energy to fall is dependent on the vertical displacement, which we call dy, and we're also calling height. And I'll show you why that's important in just a second. But if you think about this, the force applied over the displacement, gravity does the work to transform the potential energy I have due to gravity into motion. Because when it gets down here, right before it hits the ground, it's moving, right? And so if we expand that out and we think about it, potential energy due to gravity is going to be the force of gravity times the height. And then we're just going to go ahead and expand this because we know what the formula for F of G is, right? What's the formula for F of G, Stuart? You nodded. F G equals MG. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. Good job. <laughs> PEG is mass times gravity, and then we're going to add in the height. Oh, I actually knew that. I just had to think about it harder because I knew that FG meant weight. That's why I called on you. I believe in you. Okay. Wait, F I was ahead of her now. <laughs> so, is that only one thing that I can like, Yes. Okay. Right? It only, well, no, 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 no. It, it applies that potential energy due to gravity applies because it is some height off the ground. Okay. And so it has the potential to fall. I was like, wait, well, isn't well, that just well, negative right. nine? nine. Wait. Huh? G. G is 9.8. Negative 9.8. Well, remember. It's positive <coughs> both ways well, for potential. All, but I thought it was always. Remember that energy is not a vector, right? And so the direction does not matter. So in this case, we're just going to say that this oh. is absolute value of 9.8. Wait, okay. is that because a Because the equation? amount of energy that it has has to be a positive value in this case. Okay. Good. All right? So, so potential energy always has to be positive, too. Yes. Yes. All right, so the reason why I want to make sure we think of it as height is if we measure, if we take this object, right, and it starts on the ground, and then we roll it up an incline like this. Incline plane. Right? 
When it gets to here, we're going to say that it has a certain amount of potential energy due to gravity. Yes? Because it is a certain height off the ground. Mm -hmm. What you need to be careful of, though, is that this distance is not the height. Right? Yeah. It's this distance is the height. But it's so good. Because that's how high it would be measured that's from length. the ground. Wait, is that the same? No, no, no. This is length. Very good, Harley. Right. This would be the length that it moves. This is the height that it moves. So if we yes. define P E G This is A ball, I started at the bottom and moved up the hill. Right. All I'm saying, Stuart, is that be careful when you're doing the potential energy due to gravity, because in some of the problems it will tell you that the hill is a length, right? That does not determine the energy. What determines the energy is how high off the ground it goes. I'll make right. a song about that. Well, it's not going to fall down through the hill, which is why it's potential. It has the potential to fall, right? If I, if I end the cliff and I walk off the cliff, then when I fall, that potential energy turns into <laughs> falling. You're absolutely right. But what I want to, the reason why I want to explain that, and this is important, and it's helpful if you think about hiking, right? If I were to hike along this hill, it would be harder than hiking along a hill that would be like this, right? Because it's be steep because of the height of the hill. Because of the steepness, that's exactly right. And so you can imagine that the steeper it is, the more energy I am transferring into the object because I'm going higher. So like and so it's important to recognize that if I just travel farther, I don't necessarily get more energy, right? If I walk horizontally, I don't gain any gravitational potential energy because I haven't gotten any higher. But right? when you... But when I hike, I generally hike in a in a diagonal direction in order to accomplish getting higher, right? And so, so potential energy due to gravity is MGH, right? So that's that. And then the last one is elastic energy. Uh, that one there. Or PEE. -E. Oh God, Sophia. It's hilarious. Elastic energy is a little bit harder to explain in words, right? But it's the ability to to spring back. This is also under potential, right? Yes. No, 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 no. Cool. That's the PE. Okay. Organizing my notice. Nope, you're doing great. This is the potential to spring back after being deformed, right? <laughs> and this is actually true of nearly all materials, right? Yeah. Any any material is elastic because it has a natural state, and then if I deform it. Because it is elastic, it's now applying a force. And so if that force acts over the displacement with which I have stretched it out, it will pull it back and cause it to change forms. And so this is a stored form of energy. Is it going through work? It is, right? That's exactly right. Because if it's sitting here stationary, I have to apply a force in order to stretch it out. So I actively engage with it by applying work. It now has that energy stored as elastic potential energy. And then if I let the system do what it naturally wants to do, it applies work in order to transition that potential energy into kinetic energy. Wait, but not everything has elastic energy? Almost everything, everything does. Well, and it's something that you don't normally about think table? about, right? The table is absolutely elastic. Wood is bendable, right? You know that because you built lots of catapults out of things that were made of wood, right? But the wood itself didn't bend. Yes, really? it does. Yes, it Absolutely does. Absolutely does. Think of trees break. in a thunderstorm. <laughs> they are bending, but they do not break. In fact, paper is made of wood, yes? Look at this. Deformed, reformed. <laughs> Elastic. The thing is, the reason why we build bridges out of steel and concrete is because steel and concrete are elastic. What? Because they bend and move that's when you drive safe. across the bridge. Wait, because if they up. didn't, oh, then bad. they would break. Right. Because Ow. being brittle, right, oh. means that when you go to bend it, it doesn't bend, it just shatters. But this doesn't Think bend. of glass. Oh, if we built, if we, right. if we build a bridge out of glass, just 
too much force wouldn't just bend it and deform it a little bit like it does on a normal bridge, it, it would cause shatter. the whole thing to shatter. Whoa. There were many, many accidents back when wrought iron was used to make bridges for trains because wrought iron is very brittle. <coughs> and so the invention of steel, which is an alloy of iron mixed with some other materials. Wait, steel isn't just like a thing? No. Oh, I just thought that. that that's, that's totally fair. The, the ore dug out of the ground is iron, right? And iron by itself is relatively brittle, right? So we mix a few things with it in order to create an alloy that is much more flexible. And what's amazing to think about is concrete is the same way. And that's something that a lot, a lot of people don't recognize. The reason why we build bridges and buildings out of concrete is because concrete is flexible. Right? Sure it doesn't seem that flexible. It doesn't seem that flexible. Because here's the thing. That, and then it's like, like if you ran into which, the wall, it would not just bend backwards. Agreed. I mean, but the reason there is because the building strong. is very strong. strong. But it is also flexible. And that's really important because if it wasn't, it would not react well under strain. Under, and over time. Under stress. Yes. And then exactly. like, it more All right. So elastic energy is the. <laughs> The potential to reform after being deformed. Is this the last thing? Yep. Good. I'm at the bottom. Sorry, I ran out of room there and screwed up the word deformed. <clears throat> but this is all based on something that you're mostly familiar with, which is elasticity. Elasticity is given the variable k lowercase, right? K Why lowercase. Why isn't there an e? Like a lowercase e, because e, e is energy. Wait, but that's you said e and it messed me up. I know. Elasticity is the ability of a material to bend based on its material characteristics. So all materials have some level of elasticity. There are some that have very very low levels of elasticity, like glass is a great example, but glass itself is bendable, right? It, you can take a piece of glass and bend it ever so slightly. But I'm making it really hot and then you can make it really Now, if we heat it up, then we're actually liquid. changing it into a liquid. That's different. I'm talking about solids. Yes. So what's the difference between elastic and elasticity? Uh, no, very little. Uh, this is just the formation of elastic energy, whereas this is the the material characteristic that makes that possible. So what I'm saying is PE elastic is calculated by one half times K, the elasticity, times X squared, where X squared is the displacement that I stretch it out or compress it. X is the displacement from its original form. Yeah. Why? Would that just be D? It could be, yes. What is X? D is an acceptable variable it's also. General, I, generally, it is utilized as X. It's just standard standardization, yes. So you would be given like elasticity. Exactly. But would it just be a number or would it have an actual, like, you know, newton or something? Yes, it has a unit, right? Newtons per meter. It's essentially the amount of force it can apply over a displacement, right? And that's, that should make sense because that's how elastic it is. If I stretch it out further, it applies more force. Right? And so each one of these is a form of energy, right? And then the units of energy, which is true for all of these, is called joules, J-O-U-L-E-S, or capital J. A so that's the, that's the general idea.